Okay, let's continue GarageBand's interface and focus on the top half, but not a field goal though. So we still have our little loop up that we made in the previous video. And now we're going to take a look at the info button and what it shows. But first, uh, why don't we just play this little loop uh, over and over just to have some background music. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and look down at the info button, which is this guy right here, which is labeled with an I. That's correctly, correctly labeled, I info, makes sense. Go ahead and click on that, and that opens up this window right here. Here we're able to control our ins and outs, um, as well as our icon picture for the certain track that we have selected. But what mainly takes up this window are the effects up here. Now the basic default effects are already set to certain tracks based on what they are. Now if you wanted to add effects and you're not quite sure how to, how to modify effects, GarageBand has default settings within it and you can go ahead and select whatever track you're on. Since this track has a uh, that we're selected on as beats, I mean, we could go to drums or we could go to bass. Um, probably be best to go to drums. And if we want a certain sound, uh, we can select any of these and the then GarageBand will automatically make effects, such as reverb and compression and whatnot. But if you want to take the plunge and if you want to change, add, edit, or just modify these effects. You can you can always do that within GarageBand by clicking this edit button right here. Or tab, I should say. And from here you can select either the compressor or, nase, or noise gate or just add another effect. So please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any requests, please send them to requests at mahalo.com.